Lovely. Thank you, Giles. Um, uh, so, uh, good morning for those of you uh, that I don't know. I'm Julian Bird, the Chief Executive of both the Society of London Theatre, uh, which is the body that looks after theatre in London, uh, so primarily the West End, but also the major um, bodies, uh, major uh, subsidised organisations in London, National Theatre, Royal Opera House, etc. Uh, and I'm also the Chief Executive of UK Theatre, uh, the body that looks after theatre throughout the rest of the UK. Um, first of all, can I uh, say a huge thank you to Giles uh, for all his tireless work as chair of the Theatre APPG recently uh, and working with us uh, and others with the government. Uh, thank you, Giles, but also uh, many others who are on here. Uh, Tracy, who, uh, Braben, as opposed to Tracy, who looks after me in the office. Uh, Tracy Braben, can I just say a huge thank you for your, all your work as well. Uh, Nikki Aiken, I know, is not here. <laughs> for her but Nikki has been working uh, as well for us and Bob and everyone um, thank you uh, for your very vocal and public support for this sector at this moment in time and um, I'm just going to do just a few minutes of sort of where do I think we are as a sector at the moment and um, and as Giles says you know uh, on the face of it we have achieved quite a lot recently uh, a package of support for arts, culture and heritage has been announced, 1.57 billion at the top end, I think, of expectations as we were uh, negotiating and discussing that. Uh, and that's hugely welcome, of course. Um, but uh, we need to be honest also and talk around the huge uncertainty that still exists. Um, it is fantastic that Outdoor Theatre was able to start again from Saturday. Um, but under the government's roadmap, we still lack a huge amount of certainty about the future. Um, there was an expectation when the roadmap was published that we would have a date for stage four, uh, so that people could start planning stage four being indoor performances with a socially distanced audience. Uh, we still don't have that, uh, so uh, people are not able to plan. Um, and of course, the crucial date, which is the stage five one around theatres opening in full. Um, so in being able to have fully seated auditoriums uh, and many of you have heard me talk about this so apologies but if we don't get that date soon and no earlier than date uh, there is no doubt that the Christmas season in the main will be lost. Uh, we are approaching the beginning of August which is the, the real key point for producers and theatres making those decisions to produce this Christmas or not uh, and I think everybody on this call will understand the sort of devastating impact of Christmas productions don't happen, uh, both on theatres, finances, their business, but also actually in terms of their communities and in terms of uh, people experiencing theatre. I guess one of the, the things we still remain as a sector very confused around is in one way why theatre is being treated differently at times in guidance and in reopening from other sectors. Um, so cinemas are already allowed indoor cinema showings with a socially distanced audience. That is the same, uh, you know, they're the same people sitting in an auditorium. Uh, why can't that happen for live um, theatre? Um, we still remain uh, confused as to why people can sit cheek by jowl in an aeroplane and fly all over the world, but they can't do that in a building uh, when there's no fresh air, obviously, in a plane. Uh, and our latest excitement is why you can, why a driving instructor can instruct people after people after people sitting next to them in a car uh, and they can't sit in a theatre. So I think um, the confusion remains around the transparency of why certain decisions are made on some sectors and not others. Um, and as Giles said, you know, we are still at that point of crisis, I think, in the sector. Uh, we uh, don't yet know how the 1.57 billion will spread down. Uh, we don't know the split of that, who's going to be eligible, what the terms and conditions may be. And obviously this week, uh, everyone, I think, has looked with alarm at uh, the risks that the local authorities have been talking around their own finances in the UK. And it's been a wonderful part, I think, of our landscape that local authorities throughout the country have supported the arts and supported their local venues. Uh, and obviously we look uh, hugely worryingly at what their funding might look like. Um, I just want to say that actually everyone I talk to, and it's my privilege to talk to people throughout the sector very, very regularly, you know, there's a huge desire to just get to get back to work. You know, people people in the theatre are desperate to go back, start performing, start working in their communities, start engaging with young people, uh, people at the, in their latter years, 
uh, and all the extraordinary work that goes on around local theatres that isn't just about putting shows on stage. And um, uh, others later on, uh, far more qualified than me, are going to talk around the challenges that we face, as many industries do, on uh, diversity and anti-racism, uh, and I guess inclusion in its broadest sense. And we're desperate to make more strides on that um, as a theatre community. Um, and we need our venues back open to enable more and more of that um, to happen. But let me just uh, talk around a couple of the areas uh, where I guess concern is most acute at the moment. First and foremost is uh, the freelance community. Um, so theatre, about just under 300,000 people work in theatre, uh, usually 70% of which are freelancers or self-employed, whichever term we like to use. Uh, and we know that around 60,000 plus of those, uh, for one reason or another, have not had access to um, either the job retention scheme or the self-employed scheme and are getting into very real financial trouble um, now. Um, we call on the government still uh, to do something about that. Tracy has been a very vocal advocate for that grouping and I, I thank her again for that. Um, but I am very concerned now around the welfare, uh, the mental health, the financial health of a very large group of people that is in our sector. Uh, we're doing what we can ourselves. We've launched something uh, with Netflix and Sam Mendes, the Theatre Artist Fund. Uh, uh, within a week, we'd raised £1.6 uh, million pounds for that, which is fantastic, and there's more donations pouring in. Uh, but that is, that is um, emergency money for people so they can pay their rent uh, and uh, buy food. It is not a long-term solution uh, or a medium-term solution to that group of freelancers, so that's still an issue. Alongside that, can I just say, uh, we've, I've talked a lot in this process around the theatre ecology, so everything that surrounds the venues and the producers and enables them to open and operate. Uh, and uh, as this time goes on, that ecology is uh, getting into more and more trouble. Uh, things like the major suppliers to the industry, the technical suppliers on sound and lighting and things like that, uh, they are uh, getting into more and more financial strife. Um, uh, and alongside that are the thousands of small companies uh, linked with freelancers, but also the small companies that make our costumes and sets and wigs and all those other things and press and marketing. Uh, with no income coming in, they are also in trouble. Uh, the 1.57 billion we know will channel through uh, the four uh, uh, arm's length bodies of DCMS, the most important for this set to being Arts Council of England. Uh, but we know the money will go to organisations, to theatres, to venues. Um, and the big question is, how does the money then uh, trickle more, or flow, should we say, to the rest of the theatre ecology? How does it flow to people and how does it flow to all those other companies? Um, and if uh, we're looking at a scenario where a lot of um, theatres may be not opening for some months yet, uh, that strain will just become more and more acute. Um, it's wonderful that... Um, the MP for uh, the cities of London and Westminster is now one of uh, the vice chairs of this. Uh, and Nikki's done so much work with us, uh, both when she was um, uh, in Westminster Council and uh, now as uh, our local MP in the West End. Uh, so I just wanted to say that, um, you know, the impact on the wider economy is incredibly important in all of this. And we have uh, in the West End, a West End that is uh, at risk of huge failure at the moment. Uh, and one of the things that's not happening is that arts and culture and our theatres are not bringing people into London. Um, and we see the effects of that on the rest of the businesses um, in the centre of uh, the city at the moment. That is being mirrored in towns and villages and cities throughout the UK as well. So the broader economic impact of theatres not being open uh, is something I think we're going to see more and more uh, become an issue. Um, but finally, can I uh, also just pay um, huge credit to um, a large number of people in the sector who have come together in an extraordinary way uh, to campaign and make clear how important this sector is. I say regularly, uh, this is uh, an industry in which we proudly lead the world. Uh, we want uh, nothing more than to proudly get back to that position uh, and get back to it as soon as we possibly can. Thank you.